Hello, hello, buenas, buenos días, buenas tardes, buenas noches a toda la audiencia. Hola, hola. Hello, hi, hey ladies, how are you guys I'm doing? Brinkley. Hola. Hola. <laughs> Welcome back to Latinx YC, where we discuss all the good, the bad, and the ugly of U.S. politics. There's some ugly right now, actually. We'll talk about this in a little bit. Um, from a Latino, Latina, and Latinx perspective. Hello, my name is Clemencia Herrera and I am the founder of Moira Studio, a cross-cultural ad advertising agency that works with progressive political campaigns, organizations and advocacy initiatives to engage with Latino audiences how they deserve, which is in an authentic and caring way. And I am Cecilia del Cid, an environmental and social justice practitioner, Latin American immigrant from Guatemala community weaver and also working on media when you being glam i missed you oh i miss you too and <laughs> back with us is yeah. neri neri espinosa she is the vice president at muco she's born in mexico raised in texas and is dedicated to amplifying the voices and issues affecting immigrant and diverse communities working families and marginalized populations in the u.s and abroad Her work to date has focused on national, state, and local issue and advocacy campaigns, spanning social justice issues, particularly among communities of color, the Latinx community, and the immigrant community, which all of these topics we love. <laughs> Yay. Bienvenido Welcome otra vez, back, Neri. Gracias, gracias. Thank you for inviting me again. Lovely to see you all. Um, yes. And we're here. It's November. We're oh rising a week out. <laughs> For those of you out there that are not involved in the political industry, you, I don't think you guys understand the chaos and, and extreme work uh, that we have just come through. Um, you know, working every single day, nonstop for the past few months, um, trying to get you guys to vote and trying to get you guys to vote for the right people. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, so it's exactly what we want to talk about um, we've done a lot of work you know Neri on her you know on her own um, grassroots you know uh, way and I've done it on my own um, digital and TV advertising way and we've kind of like You know, the, we, we are not the only, these are not the only uh, channels of communication that we've used for people. There's so many and there's so many people involved in it. And we have done so much work and, and we've done everything we can. And then we just put it out there in the universe. And now we're just hoping that people, you know, turn out to vote and, and, and you know, and turn out to vote for the people that will do um, great things for them. And... You know, but that doesn't stop us from being really, really concerned, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, because, you know, we all have free will and you guys all do whatever it is that you want to do. And so all we can do is advise and recommend and remind, but people are going to do whatever the people are going to do. So yeah. we are sort of, you know... At the edge of our seats, waiting to see what's gonna happen on Tuesday, right, Nanny? We sure are. Uh, less than a week out <laughs> from the election. Um, I mean, Clem, you're right. We're just here to encourage and inform people, you know, to get out and vote. And honestly, that's like number one. Like, do you have a plan <laughs> to go vote? If you have not voted early, mm -hmm. you can do so. Look it up. Um, and really just get out there i think that's really just that that step that we want everyone to feel that they have a plan that they're going to get out there it's okay if you don't feel like you know every little issue and every candidate but we're here to kind of help you mm -hmm. you know inform some of that yeah there's so many important issues on the ballot Um, in every single state, there's really important issues. You know, in California, the right for abortion is on the mm -hmm. ballot. Um, there's, you know, there's all kinds of different things that are in the ballots, um, all kinds of uh, propositions and 
and, and things that are it's not just like voting for candidates you're also voting to put things on legislation you know voting uh, for certain rights you're, there's a lot of things to vote for depending on the state that you are but the good thing is that you don't need to know all of it when you get the ballot you can read it over make a decision right then and there You also have your phone, you see the ballot, and you can look up your candidate. They're not making you hurry up. You could <laughs> sit there and look up people at your leisure and then, you know, make your decision. It's not like you have to go in and out. You could, but also if you're doing the early vote, you can look up the people. You know, there's a lot of different things that, that people can do. But still, we are looking at some of the turnout numbers and they're a little low. Yes, but I will also say, usually turnout is lower during midterms. We know this. It's happened, I don't know, for forever. It always cycles, right? People will show up and turn out more for the presidential. So yes, I think it's, some of it is expected that we are going to see lower numbers for midterms um, because that's usually what happens, right? Because there's not a big sort of presidential ticket on the ballot. Um, But that's not to say, and I feel like now we keep saying this every election, it's like, this is the most important election. Um, but it is because I think we're, we're, in a, we're in a different, we're just living in a different world and a different environment where, you know, the issues Clem, that you're talking about, like literally like our democracy is at stake. Um, mm -hmm. We're all Latinas, we're here, we're all women, so we understand that abortion <laughs> rights, mm -hmm. um, which is something that I think yep. many of us grew up with. Um, is like not there anymore suddenly and so there are a lot of um there are a lot of issues that are that are on the ballot that are important um so while i think you know turnout is low um there are i think we can look back right turnout for midterms are usually um lower but we're also i think we've seen this from the 2020 election You know, Republicans and conservatives really stepped up um, on voter suppression and making sure mm -hmm. that people, that they were making it harder for people to go vote. So that's also playing into this. So there's mm -hmm. a lot of other, you know, there are there are other factors into play. Yeah, yeah but what's at stake right now? Yeah, Let's exactly. talk about what's at stake. Yeah. Besides all the propositions and all the things that people are voting for. We could so, lose the Senate. Like the Democrats will lose the Senate. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, we know this because we're in the space of the world, but I think people forget. It's like the Senate is split, guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like 50-50. All, all, all the things, all, anything, everything the other has to do is literally just win one seat. Like, and they're, they have been pouring money in, into doing that um, because it's, it's just, it's one seat. That's just how the stakes are so high, right? Mm -hmm. Um, But yes, Senate, um, I think House. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, losing yeah, majority. Of, losing, what, is, what does losing majority mean, Mary? Losing majority in the House? Um, well, it means we're not going to have Speaker Pelosi for sure, right? Trying to push through legislation that she knows it's going to help you know, millions of people and Americans across the country. Um, but that, um, I think... Particularly for me, if I see the house, if we lose the house, a lot of the people, a lot of the challengers to the Democratic nominees are, you know, there are, they're election deniers, right? They're spreading these lies. And so if you have a house where you're bringing in even more extremists who believe that the January 6th attack, you know, was not real, like mm -hmm. those are the kind of members, that's the kind of house that we're gonna, that we're, that we may have. And that means that all the issues that we care about, from obviously abortion, healthcare, economy, like all those things are, you know, are up, you know, that's, yeah. that's not, it's not a given that we're going to have any of the, any of the rights that we have now, any of just the status quo that we, you know, again, it's like we took things for granted and that's, that is up for debate now. And I think if we lose both the House and Senate, there can be more, uh, we can see more of that. It's gonna be easier so, for them. Just a reminder for our, like, people listening to us: the Senate has two senators per state, right? And the House has like a lot, um, has like 
100 and something, I don't remember exactly, amount of uh, representatives. Those are the ones who um, get selected by where we live in our districts per state. So there's like the two chambers yeah, that on the made districts, the yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And some districts have been changed during these after the Mm-hmm. 20, if you want to hear more about it, we do have an episode about gerrymandering. About the, the <laughs> gerrymandering, but also the importance of, of the census and how like the census helped people redraw the districts, mm-hmm. right? So, Neri, I have a quick question. Like, Obviously, we can think about like the whole population and what are some of the low turnout, but are there specific places where Latinos could be the, design, the, the deciding cohort like you know yes. i heard this word the other day because people always say like the latino block and and we have talked a lot in this podcast about how we're very not a group we are not like an homogeneous like group we come from yeah. we come from yes. many many we have our own layers there is lots of systems of oppression that mm-hmm. obviously affect us there's lots of anti-blackness anti-indigeneity we saw some examples of that in los angeles <laughs> so just thinking about we are a cohort, the second one in the United States after white voters, which are also not a monolith. What are some of the elections where we as Latinos could have an impact on whether they go one way or the other? It's an excellent question. Um, look, we are the Latino vote. And yes, we're not a monolith, but that's really for the people who are trying to reach Latinos, right? That, like, then you really need to understand the community so they can connect the issues to Latinos. But I think when we talk about the Latino vote and that block, um, there are states where the Latino vote is can really, you know, make a big difference and swing the votes. I, I mean, truthfully, the Latino vote is a swing vote. It's not, yes. again, to your point, you can go either way. Like, we truly are. That is actually... Um, actually what makes this really powerful <laughs> because it means that both parties have to actually Appeal invest to us. Mm-hmm. invest and connect with us and really connect with us so we can go out and really vote for you know whichever mm-hmm. candidate but there are other states i think um nevada is huge you know we have um senator mm-hmm. cortez masto she's mm-hmm. also latina um, we have seen, um, you know, a lot of, you know, the Republicans really invest there uh, <laughs> to get her to power. Um, and again, I think the Latino vote there, you know, it's complicated. There are, you know, there are issues of economy um, that are particularly very important to Latinos. And so I think in Nevada, the Latino vote is very, very important. Um, like, mm-hmm. Cortez Maso needs to win the Latino vote. In order, we need to win the Latino vote in order to win the state. Like, that's that's really the... the bottom line. The same goes for Arizona, right? And of course, Arizona and Nevada are huge, you know, where the theme population is huge. So mm-hmm. it sort of makes sense because, the, because of the demographics and the makeup of the state. Um, but truly, Democrats need to win the Latino vote to win securely those two states. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so Nevada, Arizona are huge. Um, obviously, Florida, and I think Florida is where it's very obvious that the Latino vote is not a monolith. <laughs> Because we have a lot of communities there. I know, I know, I know. But Florida um, is like its own, its own little world over there. I know, <laughs> like I know. Um, <laughs> but I mean, again, you know, is it gonna? Is it likely that Democrats are gonna be in the Latino movement in Florida? Like, you know, that's been sort of the million dollar question, and people are trying to dissect and layer all those different communities out. But, but again, if Democrats ever really want to wear Florida, like. We do have to win the Latino vote there. And there's some insights for us, right? There's the Puerto Rican vote that's growing a lot. Um, I think with the younger generations, you see that split um, with Cubans and Venezuelans. And so Mm -hmm. there's a lot going on in Florida. It's a whole Petri dish if you guys, you know, want to look into that. So I think that's, um, those are obvious states. I think when people think like, oh, where's the Latino vote? Uh, but then there's also places like Wisconsin, who are like, no, oh, there's Latinos in Wisconsin. And mm-hmm. even though it's not a huge, <laughs> even though Latinos are not like, ooh, like, you know, majority of the state, they are actually small and mighty because the vote could, like, it's so close that the Latino vote could actually really swing, like, which mm-hmm. way the election goes. And so that's another state that I think I would, that I would point out for folks that, to look out for. Um, 
you know, and particularly, you know, I think for us, we're going to be looking at those states pretty closely after, yeah. after the election because we want to see where they landed because we want to see the impact of the Latino vote. Yeah. I mean, I, w- I would probably add Colorado. Yes. To that in the Senate race. Um, it's not extremely like razor thin close, but I think the Latinos, the Latino vote definitely could change this. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, and in the governor's race in New Mexico as well. Yeah. Very close. Yeah. Um, yeah. How about Georgia or Pennsylvania? Exactly. Well, that's going to say Georgia, Georgia, Pennsylvania, North Carolina. Those are all states um, a little bit similar to Wisconsin where the Latino vote, again, can really make an impact. And although, you know, it may not have this like outsized um, impact, it really can because the margins are so close, because the races are so close, this is where the mm-hmm. Latino vote becomes really critical. Um, and the numbers are there. So, like, if you're able to really get the, those those votes in, like, it can make a huge difference. Um, yeah. So I have a question for the two of you because you obviously do this all the time, I think, and <laughs> this is a conversation Clem and I have all the time when I'm like, why? How can it be so close? Why can't this... How can these races be so close when the difference between candidates and the two parties has become so much more like, to me personally, yeah. there is like, there will be moments when they have been like shades of gray and there are moments where they are like more like opposite of the spectrum in color. And I am an independent. I don't, th- I don't particularly care for a lot of the two parties there is one that I feel like is much more agreeable and that I can get behind and organizing pushes in the right directions which has candidates that align a lot more with what I would like to see happening in the world and there is one party that Mm -hmm. I obviously don't feel like aligns with my values at all but they're very clear cut to me how can these races be so close Uh, you know they're close because well if we're talking just about the Latino vote I mean we're still we're still facing the challenge that you know I think in 2020 I think only about 50% of eligible Latino voters actually you know turned out so mm-hmm. I think we're still dealing with that we're still dealing with a lot of um, Latino voters who aren't who don't turn out to vote um, for various reasons you know I think this is, <laughs> to your point where you're like I don't really care for either party a lot of Latinos feel that way and mm-hmm. that's part of them that they don't vote because they're like oh, I don't care like I don't know I don't yeah. care for each one nothing changes for me and so they yeah, yeah. stay home that's mm-hmm. I mean that's really reason number one it's like I'm just gonna say I, but I vote all the time because I grew yes. up under dictatorship and I would never <laughs> I would never not vote yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 but I mean that's one it's like we're not even mm-hmm. hitting our full like I mean could you imagine if all oh our gosh. actual eligible all the Latino vote would go out and vote like it'd be huge yeah. um yeah I think that's part of it I mean I think um why there's a lot of undecided people there's a lot of undecided people you know I was mentioning Latinos are swing vote like they truly are like they're like wait who which candidate like they're assessing their own values and then they're sort of seeing like well which candidate like can I really identify with mm-hmm. um, which party is really reflecting the values that I care about family you know making sure my kids have a better life than I do etc like I think people are trying to also you know obviously look through a values lens um and like which part is reflecting more of that you know i think for us latinos like they're hard-working people they're working people it's all about family and unfortunately you know i think republicans on the, the economy argument like they always you know somehow they they sort of are always able to like get a latinos <laughs> in that way um not to mean that that's you know that that's alignment there, but I think for a lot of Latinos, um, they will, and we saw this with Trump. A lot of Latinos will um, sort of not not ignore, but they will be able to put aside other issues if they think the economy is going to run better, if it's going to benefit them, you know, economically. Um, mm-hmm. I think that's also that also plays into it. Um, and then, of course, you know, you have all the other people who need to vote too, right? <laughs> you have women. <laughs> yes. I mean, you have all these other, I mean, Latino, if it was just Latino vote, like, maybe we'd be talking, having a different conversation. But these races are close because 
you know, we have an electorate that is very diverse um, and, you know, people are investing different levels to connect with different voters. Yeah. And and then they, I mean, we've seen in the past few years that the nation's pretty divided in terms of their ideals and where they want to see the country go and, um, the you know, the future of the country. And, and you know, it's... Um, you know, the fact that some of these races are so close really shows how, first of all, polarized the parties have become and mm-hmm. how um, divided the nation is right now. Like in, in you know, there's even there's even been a rise of the independence, right? Which like they're like, OK, well, I'm going to borrow the best from both parties and going to do my thing, um, which, you know, it has different results um and uh it, it, but it's it does it does show that you know the parties have just become extreme extreme you know mm-hmm. like one does one thing and one does the, something completely different and and um and so it's it, it it does divide the people and um but but have they really become that extreme because i've also expressed in this conversations that I think that there is no left in the United States, for example, right? Like, we have a center left, and mm-hmm. then we have a right who has become very extreme. And this this idea of what is extreme, and I think that when we have conversations in which we don't really define, like, what's the extreme, if this, for me, which one of the most important issues, right, is climate. I know that communities of color, I know that the Latino communities are much more in the front lines of climate issues. I also know that we don't have a lot of it's time left to to prevent some of very catastrophic things that are going to affect us all in general, but are going to affect our communities first. Yeah. And I but know I that also know that this is like the lowest priority on everyone's mind. But I I don't I've seen some reporting this weekend when it says that Latinos believe about climate change. There is like polls from Telemundo, from Axios, from all Latinos that are showing that the youngest generation, this is our biggest concern. Like, there's, what is the point of having dollars in my pocket if there will not be clean water for me to drink? I cannot drink a dollar bill. <laughs> like, I cannot yeah. breathe a dollar bill. And I cannot buy clean water either if there is no clean water. <laughs> well, so and- why is not that message being, like... Expressive. Yeah, there is. I mean, like we've yeah. we've we've worked in yeah. that mess, you know, with that yeah. messaging, but the polls do show that this is like the lowest priority. Like the people really want to see, like, oh, climate change. How is it gonna affect my pocket? But there's yeah. no like, oh, we're running out of time. There's like, no. It's more about like, you know, how is it gonna affect me directly? Like, is it gonna yeah. is my is my electricity bill gonna be higher? Is like you know we were we were just talking about this in the last time that Neri was yeah. here with the inflation reduction, Lyra. yes, yeah, yeah, and That's you know great. and about like how we've been drumming excitement about it. It was like, yeah, I mean, I you know, we- it's like it's like climate is not in the highest priority, and and this is because you know it, in in going back to the extreme stuff mm-hmm. because the parties have it's not really about like. You know, it's really funny you now that I think about it. It's like, it's not like the parties define themselves as something. It's the other party defines the other party as extreme. Got it. So it's like, you know, they, they're like calling each other socialists and fascists. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> which they're not. <laughs> and, and, and also... One is closest to that. One of them is closest to that definition than yeah. the other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it, I mean... One of them Depends attempted a coup, the, holder, the yeah. other one didn't. <laughs> yeah. so, but but at the end of the day, it's like, you know, this is this extremes, um, you know, on like, you know, these people don't don't care about this and these people don't care about you, this group of people. And, mm-hmm. you know, there's there's been a lot of this uh, polarization and, and, and that that has backfired on everyone um, and that has made people not want to vote also because they're just like none of these speak to me you know yeah i mean but i think since you think it's also uh, you know we all have short memories yeah. <laughs> so like as much as like i'm like yes i care about climate but i mean we even saw it this summer when like gas prices were high i mean our people like 
if you were to ask people like, hey, you know, your bills are high, your electricity bills are high, gas prices are high, but hey, we should move to renewable energy and let's stop using oil like yeah, now. Yeah, people be like, mm-hmm. what? You know, so it's like, I, I think it's, and I think the climate stuff, and I think, I mean, yes, of course, Latinos care about that, but it's also the younger Latinos, right? I think it's these younger generations who are like, we're not going to have a world left and the people mm-hmm. in power are doing nothing about it. And so I think, yes, I think younger Latinos probably care about that more. And I think, you know, when you're talking to older Latinos, um, you know, it's it's like your usual kitchen table, um, you know, issues, right? Or, again, also, um, you know, we're also getting these climate disasters and these like extreme weather events happening. And so I think as more of those happen more regularly, which they are, then it becomes, right, people's like, top of mind mm-hmm. and because it's affecting people directly in that way and so mm-hmm. I think sometimes it's just it's hard again it's like how do you connect yeah. the issues to people directly and the impact that's going to have in their lives and, and at the end of the day like it, in terms of climate you know the the, the democrat messaging has been mm-hmm. you know in order for us to reverse this there's quite a lot of work that we need to do quite yeah. a lot mm-hmm. and, and so it makes it seem like Oh, we have to do a bunch of things and and like, you know, there's going to be the restrictions on people and there's going to be restrictions on on companies. And, you know, and and a lot of people are like, well, the U.S. is not about restriction. It's about freedom. And so it's like, okay, well, we can have our cake and eat it too. Like we either want to have some clean um, climate or or, or like environment or we're all going to be free and, you know, with dirty water and choking to death. (laughs) You know, it's kind of like... The United States' best efforts to build a middle class are built on regulations. Like there was regulations that have been there for a long time. And I think it's important to have the conversations about who is benefiting, like what is the difference between corporation and government or like Mm -hmm. who is paying for those taxes that we're all paying. Like if we, there is a huge investment from the party in government right now about many things. We talked with Neri about the IRA last time she was here. And I think for me, it's just like, you know, they, there is the student debt forgiveness. There is a lot of things that affect people's pockets every mm-hmm. day. And to me, it's like as an electoral, like how is it that that is still? The, uh, my question is about like that message. And what is it that is not landing or connecting? Because I do think that the last two years have imp- stopped a kind of like downslide in many aspects and have begun to turn that curve up and like what do we begin to do to invest in our communities to g- like if we have to do climate change transition absolutely and that comes with huge economic opportunities for our communities with huge retraining with a lot of funds being added to uh, education because we have to build the capacity that for a long time has been being you know yeah. companies have brought from abroad so that's kind I, of what I, i'm going I agree, at the conversation but it's all, it all comes down to education right and this is sort of like what you know Neri and i work on all the time yeah. trying to educate people on like the benefits of clean energy oh there's gonna be jobs and there's gonna be this but you know it's uh and Neri, please speak to this yeah. but, but to me like educating the public is like one of the most difficult expensive things that there are yeah i mean it's like i mean the biomass strangers has done it Oh, has passed like landmark legislation <laughs> in this yes. like two years and I feel like people have either forgotten about it or they're like oh yeah that happened but then they're like okay whatever um, you know people just sort of are like eh, whatever because again it's like people have short term memories <laughs> like even this IRA that ha- you know that passed just like this summer people are already like oh yeah what was that again um, mm-hmm. so it's like the short term memory I mean I think the other piece of this too is that you have voters and then you have corporations mm-hmm. and corporations who have millions and millions of dollars who are literally funding a lot of campaigns um, and like funneling all that money into elections and they're also having an impact and so you know yes we care about the climate but then if you have corporations who are pouring millions into electing people who are going to side with them and who are just going to protect corporate interests and not voters and people's lives and actually like our environment and our world like that's also like comes into play where you know unfortunately you know our elections is not 
yes, we have to get out and vote, but we're also working against all these, this dark money that is in our elections. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. that that's an excellent point to make to remind our listeners that there is a lot of money in it, right? Like you, as mm-hmm. you mentioned, by many times, like how expensive it is, where is the money coming? So as we evaluate our candidates and we see, we always have to be thinking about like, who might be behind, where the, you know, follow the money in a sense. Follow but the that, money. that feels mm-hmm. like probably when our days, our, our day to day, right? We relied on reliable sources of like closed sources to kind of think of where we're gonna vote or if we're gonna vote, because we don't have a lot of, I had a friend who texted me. It's the first time they became a citizen this this year, and they were Ooh. like, "I got my mail." And she, they sent me that photo. I was like, "I got this stuff in the mail, like uh, ballot mail in ballot in Massachusetts." And they were like, "I don't really know about politics. Like, I just register as a Democrat. Should I just vote for all the Democrats in the list?" I was like, "That's an option." Go for it. It's a choice. You know, like, it's a choice. <laughs> but then I said, you know, to do it. Yeah. But like, they, I wonder if like they reached out to a person that they knew, right? That had voted, that has this like interest. Like, so I don't think she was forming her perception based on probably candidates or. And this ads. is and this is the thing that like I'm sorry, it drives me drives me nuts because like we make like voter guides and we make that whole digital campaigns on like how to vote and what to do and then it's like when I hear this I'm just like oh (laughs) what is going on like why isn't it reaching to is it why isn't it reaching people sometimes and it's uh you know people have a lot of you know visual and um sensory overload when it comes to everything right now and you know i i I, do remember that piece of data there was like how many pieces of advertising a person sees every day i I can't remember but it's a lot and so i i assume that people are overloaded with a lot of things and 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 so like you know how, how to vote even though it may it may have passed by her on her social media or like you know or whatever you do whatever she does in her day to day or even Mm -hmm. the radio whatever it just you know it doesn't register but you know this is why it's like we just keep and we sound like broken records but it's it's so important you guys it's so important please go out and vote please (laughs) please go out and vote if you don't know how to do it there's plenty of resources online you know how to, uh, that teach you how to do it. If you don't know who to vote for, there you know there you can go to the candidate's website uh, to see their their platform, to see their plan. You can look them up on YouTube. They, they you can look up their social media. They have lots of videos of of them talking about what they want to do on their platforms. There's so many resources out there um, for you to find out. And if you don't have time still show up and just if you like their name just vote for them i don't know if you see a latino last name just vote for them i don't know just do it but do it text a friend text a friend first yes you can text a friend make a text a friend that has a plan make a plan there you go but I think this is important too because I think um, you know there there's like research that shows that particularly for Latinas, a lot of Latinas don't vote because they're not confident because mm. it feels like voting is like oh my god I have to like know all of the information. Which climbs like, to your point, like yes, yeah, there's like a lot of voter guides. I think, but I think people are like, but I still don't know <laughs> like, yeah. what you know. Yeah. And I think it's I, I you know, and it's crazy to think that just because you just don't feel confident who to vote for, like, you're just not going to vote. But, like, that is, like, uh, that is real. Like, people mm-hmm. feel that. And they, I mean, that's part of probably why they texted you, Susie, because she was yeah. like, who do I know that's voted mm-hmm. who I can, like, talk to? Yeah. Um, call, give me a call. Anybody that doesn't know who to vote for, <laughs> give me a call. I'll, let, I'll tell them. But, I mean, <laughs> but that's also another piece, right? Because a lot of, like, there are a lot of, the, obviously, we have, you know, your first, second generation. There are a lot of Latinos who are mm-hmm. now, like, sort of have been born here. But a lot of, Latinos also don't come from families who have voted before. Like mm-hmm. I certainly, like you know, I became a U.S. citizen when I, you know, in my early twenties, mm-hmm. and obviously Me my too. parents had never voted. Right, my they had never voted. I mean, they're not citizens, and so they still haven't voted. <laughs> but like, but like I had to kind of go and figure it out, you know. And so I think that we also have come from families that voting is not just it's not 
a thing that you just do and grow up with, and it's normalized. Like、yeah. a lot of our, of a lot of our <laughs> community does have to figure it out. And also, we think, like as I said, like if I know about it because I grew up in a specific situation in Guatemala, and my parents were like, "We're gonna empadronarnos, and we're going to find out." And it was very important because you didn't have the option to vote for many years when I was a kid. So it was also always very important, and I think if you haven't always had that kind of like conscious, like generational, like、mm-hmm. like learning, and also like I was gonna say, I'm very proud of my friend because I was not disciplined enough to like request my mail in ballot. I had to go and find that like early polling place because I didn't want to do it on Tuesday. But like I was proud that. She actually requested her ballot and、mm-hmm. had it, and actually was like, "I'm gonna." I was like, "If you haven't sent it by Monday, don't send it by mail. Drop it off in like a Dropbox. Don't take、mm-hmm. a chance." Like you know, it, it gave me the opportunity to at least point certain things. But I do think that many things about voting are about how if someone that we trust will explain it closer to us, and I think that that might be some of that.、Um, Mm-hmm. Why some of those campaigns that are very much like what knocking doors and which require a lot of resources, right? Feel much more personal and much more like intimate. Yeah, yeah. it's also about power. It's also about、yes. knowing knowing your the power that you have. In a lot of people, they feel helpless and they feel like they can't make a change in the world. And you know, voting for someone that is going to pass climate change legislation, that's changing the world. Yeah, voting for someone that is going to give public, women's rights—that's、yeah. changing the world. Education, public voting education. Voting for someone that is going to give you more—I don't know—more、uh, money or higher wages—that's changing the world. So,、yeah. don't think that what you're doing is really small. What you're doing is huge, especially the Latino community, guys. You have been infamous for not voting. <laughs> <laughs> no te vayas a quejar luego. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to hear any of you. I don't want to hear any of you. If you don't go vote, please don't complain. <laughs> the complaint, the complaint box is closed if you don't vote. <laughs> I mean, it is, but it's also. I mean, this is how democracy works. Like. People have to engage in it, you know. I think we were talking、it's、about this last time, right? Yes, it's like a practice. People like actually have to participate for democracy to work,、yeah. and so like, and right now we're really in a time where like, truly, you know, our democracy is facing some of the toughest challenges and like,、mm-hmm. you know, attacks that we have seen in a really long time, and you know, for people, you know, who come from countries who. Have experienced dictatorships and who have, you know, been governed under governments that do not value, you know, freedom and democracy、mm-hmm. and justice and equity. I mean, these、mm-hmm. things are like these things are at stake right now. And so, I mean, I know it's like we said today, but it, it truly is. I think these elections and these times that we're in, like, our vote truly matters because it's about voting. It's about electing the people that we want to see in power. But it truly、really、is about like our democracy and whether it will survive. Now, like that, that very, note, I know. Like, and that, that very, 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 dire, very <laughs> dire note, we will end this. <laughs> we will end this episode. Not dire. It's actually quite realistic. No, yeah, it's a, it, very, <laughs> exactly. I like it's it.、Important. It's a very it's important. important and and you know poignant. <laughs> point of view in which like we're saying, <laughs> hey guys. <laughs> There's everything is at stake right now. Everything. Yes.、It、Our is, future is. is at stake, and it's in your hands. Go home. Yes. We all can go be. Home. Un granito, <laughs> gotita, go gotita. Go se llena el, se llena el océano. Our boats、mm-hmm. are like just un granito de arena. We have to put our granito. Bota, all right.、Bota. Well,、um, I hope the two of you are voting. <laughs> yes, I voted already. I'm making my, my plan. plan. I'm gonna try and go this Friday. Do early voting. <laughs> yes. I'm gonna do early voting on Saturday. That's right. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So,、um, thank you guys. This is the end of season four, and、uh, I know. <laughs> 
no. um, it's been a very very wild ride this year we talked about really interesting things had some extremely awesome people um, as guests including Neri and that's um, yes, Neri <laughs> we love we love Neri I and, was stepping um, on here <laughs> <laughs> it's been super fun and uh, uh, we are going to take a break um, in which we are going to you know come up with some new topics to talk about and get some new guests and we'll come back afresh next year mm -hmm. in 2023 and um, with our season five and I'm excited and so I'm, excited, I'm excited to take a break but I'm also excited about the <laughs> season five and yes. uh, thank you guys so much out there um, for listening to us and for giving us your feedback and um, telling us how you feel so please keep doing that um, at latinxyz pod on Instagram TikTok and Twitter if you want to get in touch with Neri uh, it's Neri underscore Espinosa with an S on Twitter um, and uh, if you like this podcast share with your give friends us give us a review and tell us what you want to hear next can I put a plug in for Absolutely. your next your opening seasoner which I am gonna like put my hopes in where it's gonna be like historic Latino turnout <laughs> yeah. in the 2022 midterms I feel yes. like you gotta, we're gonna have to unpack that you know <laughs> Yes. I mean, I, I love to do that episode. So, um, everybody out there, please Let's make it help, happen. help us help us make this episode happen. Yes. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about the most to historic about turn, right? turnout ever. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But you all have a beautiful and healthy season, end of, you know, holiday season and a beautiful end of the year and a prosperous Año 2023. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Lizzie, really thank honored. you so much for everything. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Clem. Thank you, Ceci. It's always it's always so much fun to be on here. And yeah, I mean we got we got we got the rest of the year to go and we'll see how it goes. But I am optimistic, as many yes. of our of our gente is. <laughs> we're, we're optimistic. Nuestra, nuestra gente nos va a sorprender. <laughs> Nos esperamos. Nos esperamos. Sí. Thank you, guys. Thank you.